Turning to 1079, this bill would require that for any yellow taxi trip resulting from an e-hail. The e-hail app, if it charges the passenger a fare other than the metered rate, must pay the driver an amount at least equal to what the driver would have received had the trip's fare been calculated by the meter. As background, in 2018, TLC launched the FlexFare pilot program, which allows TLC-licensed e-hail apps to offer, offer passengers an upfront binding fare quote similar to what passengers enjoy in the FHP sector. Last month, TLC issued its pilot evaluation report, finding, among other things, that driver revenue per mile on metered versus non-metered trips is roughly the same. But because e-hail trips tend to be longer than street hail trips, e-hail trips are typically more profitable for drivers. Intro 1079, while intending to ensure that taxi drivers have income protection on non-metered trips, may undermine a program that provides taxi drivers with additional trips that already pay drivers about the same per mile as street hails. Any e-hail app required to run the taxi meter on a trip where the passenger is given non-metered upfront fare quote would likely stop offering these upfront fares as it would be nearly impossible for an e-hail app to offer the certainty of an upfront price to passengers while at the same time using the meter for purposes of driver pay. As I mentioned earlier, while data on revenue, active vehicles, and active drivers are all trending in the right direction, trips continue to be well below pre-pandemic levels. We are concerned that Intro 1079 would impose a requirement that would potentially limit taxi, option, or taxi trip options for both passengers and drivers. Thank you again. Awesome. Thanks so much, Chair Farias. Uh, and thank you to, uh, to our, our usual chair, uh, Majority Whip Brooks Powers. Uh, but thank you all for your testimony today. Uh, and good morning, everyone. Sorry, um, I, I couldn't hear all of it because of another hearing next door. But I did want to ask a couple questions of uh, Bidavi. It's very nice to see you from the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Um, thank you for your work. Thank you for all the drivers who are here today, too, uh, for your great work. And I'm proudly in solidarity with you all. Um, in every struggle that we face to make sure that you all, your voices are heard and your rights are protected as drivers. So thank you all so much. Uh, Ms. Desa, I just wanted to ask you, you and I may have missed some of this in your testimony too, but just um, with intro 1079 that we're, we're considering today, um, you know, this disparity, and we heard some testimony from TLC before too, um, uh, but didn't quite get the clear answers that we wanted to on uh, why this disparity between uh, the um, uh, e-hail rates um, and the regular street uh, hail rates, uh, why it exists. But I did think, I was hoping you could speak in a bit more personal terms about, for drivers, what does that disparity mean? When they're getting paid less on e-hails than they are on street hails, what is the personal, the human impact on drivers, on their livelihood, on their families? Thank you, Councilman. Um, Basically, what it means is you're instead of the trip paying you, you're paying for the trip as a driver. Because, you know, trips for drivers are not just about revenue, they also represent expenses. Because when you're engaged in a trip, there's a cost to, of course, gasoline. It's also wear and tear of the vehicle. It also adds to your insurance rates, depending on the mileage, right, that you're putting in. You know, and, and you're, you're at risk. Um, and so when on these e-hail trips, you, the driver is being paid below the metered rate, it means that the cost of that trip is now being covered by the driver. It's not, the trip has now become a liability rather than a source of revenue. And I think it's really important to note here that, I mean, for yellow cab drivers, you know, you've got the highest level of expenses across the industry, because, both because of the medallion but also because of the vehicle requirements. You know, there is a vehicle uh, retirement requirement on yellow cabs. It does not exist for FHVs, for example. The insurance rates can also be higher. And for drivers, for yellow cab drivers, the fare that they earn, um, that, that gross fare, a large percentage of that goes toward taxes. You know, the, for example, you know, if... Um, there's $2.50 plus another 50 cents, $3 that goes to the MTA. There's a dollar that goes to a TLC improvement fund that's supposed to subsidize the transition to accessible vehicles. Um, but that's money that's not going to the driver. If it's a JFK trip, there's also a fee that goes to Port Authority. So on these e-health trips, if you're getting 
we're seeing examples, and some of our members are going to testify, we're seeing examples where on some trips you're earning like $17 less than what it would be on the meter. And that's that includes still having to pay like three, four dollars out of that money just to go toward these taxes. So this is a significant pay cut. And uh, lastly, I just want to say it's the driver that's enduring the cut. We believe that the passenger is still paying the metered rate. It's just that the the money is not trickling down to the drivers themselves. That's an enormous disparity, um, and 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 thank you for also bringing. I'm also quite shocked to hear too that um, the 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 passenger may be paying the same meter rate, but the the proper income is not going to the driver. How many trips would you say, um, especially more and more with the advent of of more ride hail apps too? Mm-hmm. How many trips on average, or roughly? are drivers getting off of the e-hills? Because my sense is $17 difference, for example, with all the other expenses, that adds up really quick um, over time when you have drivers who are trying to pay their rent or their mortgage, um, they may have debt or otherwise um, that they've incurred with their medallion or otherwise too. How, um, how, how many trips would you say on average are they taking with e-hills and is that number increasing? Well, you know, one of the faults of the TLC's report is um, it, it does not include Uber trips, for example. And, you know, of course, Uber dominates in the entire industry. And so we're not seeing those numbers just yet. Um, but, you know, many drivers end up rejecting the trips right now because they're so low paying. But even if it's, for example, you know, one trip a shift, and most drivers typically work six shifts within a week, right? Um, in the course of a year, that's, that could be like 300 trips. And that, I mean, that, that I'm extremely lowballing it. So, um, but one thing in the TLC's report that's very important to note is they, they said in their final report that while they expected e trips to be primarily in the outer boroughs, what they found is that, in fact, that they're majority in Manhattan, in the central business district itself. So trips that drivers would normally um, do as a street hail and earn off the meter are now, you know, switching over to the e market where drivers are being paid less money. So it's, it's another reason why this bill has such urgency. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Drivers and Taxi Workers Alliance.